This is Braille punctuation marks in one lesson. Most of the standard Braille punctuation marks are found along the bottom row of cells that fit the A through J pattern, and here they are. Now let's take a look at just these cells and see if we can't memorize a few of them. One of the most frequently seen punctuation marks is the period, and the way to remember a period is that the sentence ends right here. But the cell for the period is also the cell for the dollar sign. So another way to think about this is, I want my money now. The cell representing the parentheses is used for both the left parentheses and the right parentheses. And if you add these symbols onto the cell itself, it kind of looks like them next to each other. Now the question mark is another important cell, and you can think of it as someone raising their hand to ask a question with their finger pointed up and their thumb pointed out. In fact, the cell for the question mark also represents the open quotation, so you can also think of the opening and closing quotation marks as someone putting up their hands and kind of framing out the sentence with their pointer fingers up and their thumbs out. Now a note about the asterisk that falls between the quotation marks. It actually takes two of these cells together before you can read them as an asterisk. Now on the far left, the cell representing the comma, you can remember about the story we learned in a previous video about walking home from school. This cell is in the A column, which in our story was a coochie coochie coo, and you can think of each of those words as being separated by commas. Same with the exclamation point. That cell falls in the F column, which in that story was finish your paper and edit it too, which your dad said kind of sternly to you. So, these should help you remember some of the more commonly seen punctuation marks in Braille. Punctuation marks, by the way, are usually used at the end of a word. If they come at the beginning of a word or in the middle, they will be used as contractions instead. So now we're looking at 54 out of the 64 Braille cells. So let's finish up by looking at the last 10 cells, some of which also represent punctuation marks. Now, to remember this last row of cells, you'll just need to remember three numbers. They are 364, 435, and 546. Now, these numbers are fairly easy to remember because the first digit in each number is sequential, as is the last digit. 364, 435, 546. These numbers will help us remember how the raised dots are added to each of the cells in the last row. So our first number was 364. So we add dot 3, and then to that we add dot 6, and then to that we add dot 4. So the first cell has one dot raised, the second cell has two dots raised, and the third cell has three dots raised. So let's do that again. Our second number was 435. So we add dot 4, and then we add dot 3, and then we add dot 5. Now let's do this one more time. Our final number was 546. So let's add dot 5, and then to that we add dot 4, and then to that we add dot 6. So how does this help us to remember these cells? Well, let's say you ran across a cell that looks like this. This cell only has two dots raised, dot 4 and dot 5. Well, let's think about our three numbers. The number that has 4 and 5 as the first two digits is, well, the last one, 5, 4, 6. So we know that our cell falls in the third of the three groups of cells, and that'll help us remember what they mean later on. Now, if we come across this cell with just dot 4 raised, we can think back to our three numbers and see which one has 4 as the first digit. Well, of course, that was the number 4, 3, 5. So we know that this cell falls into the second group of our three groups of cells. Now, it's important that we remember these cells in groups of three, because again, we're going to memorize their meanings in groups of three as well. The cells in the last group, which is our 5, 4, 6 group, do not represent any contractions or punctuation marks. They're only used with other cells when we talk about multi-cell contractions, so we'll ignore those for now. So now, to remember the first two sets of cells, which are the 364 and 435 groups, we can think of an actress who is just about to make it big in Hollywood. People would say of her that she is an upcoming accent star. 
Now the up just refers to the apostrophe, while the accent cell is used right before letters which appear in print with an accent marking, such as the letter C in the word garçon. Now the hyphen after COM and the slash after ST will go ahead and drop down, because these cells also represent those punctuation marks. In fact, in 2007, the rules for transcribing Braille were changed so that you had to write the slash with the 456 cell preceding it. But any books transcribed before this time will only contain this one cell for the slash. Also, the ST cell, if used by itself, represents the word still. So now we can see 9 out of our 10 cells in the bottom row. So what is that last cell? Well, it's simply the cell representing the space, because all of its dots are lowered. Now we're looking at all 64 cells in Braille. To make this a little bit easier to see, though, we'll shade all cells that match the A through J pattern, but that are not a letter with the color yellow. This way, we can easily see which cells represent the letters of the alphabet, including the W, which also represents the word will, when used by itself. In fact, we'll look at all the letters of the alphabet and what words they represent when used by themselves in our next video. But for now you've learned Braille punctuation marks in one lesson.